real point I wanted to make was I see massive, massive fraud, and I know people left and right. I've first, we've all known people. Come on. We've all known people who've really abused the system. When I lived in Japan, they had a saying, free costs more than money. Because when you create a sense of social entitlement, what you do is you just destroy people's incentive and ambition. And I wish there would be more black conservative voices here, sometimes focused on the show, who would point that out. Okay. The harm uh, that it does, really. Free costs more than money, people. Okay, let's get a response. Ms. Duggan. I, I would, um, would agree that uh, free does cost more than money, depending, again, on the context that you put it in. I mean, I would say there's a few things here. Um, and one is that we have an unemployment rate that's practically double what it was at the beginning of the recession. Uh, it hovers around 8 or 9%, depending on um, which part of the country you're in. In some states, it's in the double digits. It is at this stage an entrenched unemployment problem. It is not going away. And so it's not as easy as saying, why don't people just get up and get a job? It's not that simple. Um, because for a lot of people, the jobs don't exist. And for a lot more people, the jobs that do exist don't pay enough money for them to be able to put their kids to school and put food on the table. And that's the reality, especially mm -hmm. when you talk about minimum wage. Mm -hmm. The other reality is that <clears throat> we only call something welfare when we're giving it to people who are poor. We don't mm -hmm. call it welfare when we're giving people the kind of tax breaks that we're spoken about in the last right, segment. Right, by, by Chuck Collins, when we were talking about uh, GE and Exxon Mobil, the big oil companies, the, the big multinational corporations, uh, that when GE pays less taxes in a year than, than you do, the, uh, w w what do you call that? So, yes, you're right. Go ahead. And we also didn't call it welfare when we gave a bailout to the banks, and if that wasn't free money, gosh, I don't know what was. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think that... You know, I think when we want to address these systems, and no doubt every system that we have is a system that can do with analysis and improvement, but I think that when we address them piecemeal, we sort of lose sight of the big picture. And, 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 and in, in the fashion, we can't actually fix them piecemeal. We must look at the whole sometimes mm -hmm. in order to understand what's wrong with the individual segments. I have never met an individual or a family who comes to a soup kitchen or food pantry who wants to be there. Mm -hmm. And anybody who has witnessed a soup kitchen or food pantry line, either because they've had to stand in that line or they live near a soup kitchen or food pantry and see people lining up outside, they will understand what I mean. Even in the winter months, you have individuals who will stand on line for hours at a time mm -hmm. just in order to get a hot meal or a food pantry bag with enough meals for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and again, you know, one of the ways to, to look at the story is to sort of think about who is coming, who, who are the people who need help. And all of the research shows that it is um, elderly individuals over the age of 65, people living with disabilities, the working poor, and quite a high number of women and children who mm -hmm. are relying on emergency food, who are relying on housing subsidies, who are relying on help in different um, in, in different ways. And these are the individuals who are being hurt when we start cutting budgets to all of these programs in a segmented fashion. Um, you know, I don't think anybody wants to be at the age of 65 or older mm -hmm. standing on a soup kitchen or food pantry line for four or five hours in the winter months and certainly not on a day when it's 94 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we have to step back from the individual anecdotal stories is there fraud out there? No doubt there is. But I think most of the fraud is happening at a much higher level. And for the vast majority of people who rely on these programs, the issue is how do I, how do I scrape up enough so that my kids can eat tonight, so that I can buy my medicine, so that I can keep a roof over my head. And for many of us, the, the battle to, to keep all of those pieces flowing is a battle that's being lost.